up MFers, freaking Jack for today's video. Been doing a lot of bank fishing, a lot of creek fishing, spillway fishing, stuff like that. But we're not gonna do the same thing we usually do today because usually you see me throw something that looks like this for a topwater frog. When I wanna get really frisky, I want a really big bite, I'll switch up to this guy, even bigger. That's like a one ounce bait. We're not using either of those. Instead of using this giant guy right here, we're using this little itty baby finesse frog. Now really quick, before we head out to the lake, I wanna let you guys know this video is being sponsored by the online mobile game War Dragons. War Dragons is a mobile real-time strategy game where players directly control dragons to attack enemy bases. There's over 150 dragons to breed and collect in the game, each with different attack styles, abilities, and classes. Players can join guilds to launch cooperative attacks with friends and family and dominate their rivals. The game allows you to attack and defend in real time. If you're online as an attack on your base occurs, you can actively defend it by manning your towers as the opponent flies through the base. Now one amazing reason I wanted to work with War Dragons is they're actually partnering with an amazing organization called Stack Up. Stack Up is an organization dedicated to bringing both veterans and civilian supporters together through a shared love of video gaming. During the month of July, War Dragons is partnering with Stack Up to support veterans and our troops on bases and in military hospitals. War Dragons will match every dollar of donation up to $10,000. Details on how to donate can be found within the game. Download War Dragons on your phone or tablet by hitting the install button right down below in the description and find out how breeding your very first dragon can help donate to Stack Up's cause. You can also find more details about how to contribute right down there in the description box. Okay guys, I got my small frog, my itty bitty tiny frog tied on. Let's head to the creek, catch some fish. See you there. All right, just got to our first spot. Before we even get started, I'll show you guys this is all I brought. One rod, it's got braid. I think this is 15 pound braid. Go with the spinning rod because this thing weighs like I think an eighth of an ounce. It's ultra, ultra light. But before we even start, I'm not a fan of these legs right here. From my past experience with frogs that are like this, they suck, they don't kick right, they get in the way of, they block the hook ratio, and they don't look near as natural as, you know, just a regular skirt. So we're gonna swap that out. I'll show you just really quick how to do that. First off, we're just gonna rip these guys out of here. And we might have to, uh, yeah, we're probably gonna have to take a hook and pop some of that plastic out of that hole right there. Give me a second. So then we're gonna take, this is 30 pound trilene big game. We just need a big piece of that. And we're just gonna work that into the legs like so. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get it through the first time. And we're gonna go back through one more time like that. So you get yourself a little loop right here. All we do is take some living rubber tied a knot in it, this is just natural living rubber, green and brown. We're gonna put it through that loop, half of it anyway, or a little bit less than half. We're gonna spit in the holes right here to lube her up a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And we're just gonna pull this material right on through. Might be a little bit big of a knot for this small frog. We're gonna pull her through best we can. Actually tore the leg a little bit, perfect. It's not what we're trying to do. And that is, uh, that's obviously way too much for that little guy. So we're gonna cut him way down. Take our scissors, cut to the desired length, which will be on this guy, not much. I'm gonna believe about an inch, inch of rubber. We're gonna actually thin that up a little bit too. We don't need all that getting in the way of the hookup. We're almost there. We're just gonna take a drop of gel super glue. Gel super glue is freaking, I'm telling you guys, killer for so many things on the boat. Jig trailers, repairing baits. This guy's probably gonna get tore up if we catch anything on it. So we can repair this guy. And boom, that'll dry in about 10 seconds. There's our frog that doesn't look stupid and actually catches fish. You guys like it? Okay, let's go catch fish. Well, I hear flowing water. That's a damn start. I haven't been to the spot yet this year, but I've caught some big ones here in the past. So I figured it'd be a good place to start to try the microfrage. All right, water's not as clean as I had hoped, but clean enough. We can't make too much noise with this frog. <coughs> Pretty finesse guy. Man, this thing's tiny. There we go. Get off there. Yes. 
That was sick. Look at that. Oh, microfrog. Okay. All right. Not a giant by any means. I've caught some big, big ones in here and seen some giants in here. We can start with that. That's the first cast. So we made it all the way up the spillway. Look at that. On the little baby guy. Sick. It does work kind of, hopefully. I think the thing I'm most jacked about is uh, we're one for one on hookups because the way this hook is shaped and as small as the hook is, I was kind of nervous about that. That guy came up and freaking clobbered though. Got my drag clinched down tight. I'm using this prototype mf -er rod, which is a daggum killer. It's like a 610 medium. It's got a fast enough tip that you can throw stuff like this, but I want to make it the all around like finesse rod. And uh, with braid, straight braid, I'm using straight like 15 pound braid, no leader. It uh, feels like it's money for this technique. There we go. Oh, that's a better one. That's a better one. That guy just swam over there slow and slurped it. Oh shoot, that's a, not a healthy one at all. Damn. I hadn't been here yet this year. I was kind of worried it would be like chocolate milk, but the water's actually decently clean, like two feet visibility. This guy's got a big frame and a skinny body. No wonder he couldn't fight very well. There we go, micro frog. I don't know, I'm pretty happy with the results so far. I brought a frog down here a couple times last year and didn't even get a bite. Microfrage on the micro body of water. Seems to be working. Our skirt's holding up good. Perfect. Two for two on hookups too. I love it. They're aggressive though. I mean, it's the middle of the day, summer. It's about noon right now. I didn't get out very early this morning, but I kind of thought it might help the top water bite to be honest. And they're eating. I'm just kind of working this guy with like real short twitches and then there's a decent amount of current. So I'm just kind of letting it flow with the current and twitching it like three or four times every once in a while. With the spinning rod and the size of this frog, it's not very easy to walk. Walking this frog is pretty much not a thing. Let's put this right up against that tight bank. Got him, yes. Oh, that was such a cool bite. He just came up and slurped it. There's another super unhealthy looking fish. What a cool freaking bite that was though. Came up and just slurped it right off the top. Oh man, the hook is buried. I was worried that wouldn't be enough rod to penetrate. Cause these aren't like super thin gauge hook. They're at least like a medium, medium heavy gauge hook. And another damn culprit. It's working. The micro frog. There might be something to this. What sucks is there's big ones at this usually. Maybe we'll have to go back down underneath this bridge right here to get them, but deal. I'm in, it's working. These are almost like trout bites where they just come up and like size it up and just roll on it. The one jumped out of the water. Of course, that was the one that missed it. But I just saw a dark spot rise up underneath the frog and he was actually coming right at me. So it's cool. I got to see the mouth of the fish just open up and close right over the back of that tiny little frog. I think it helps they can get the whole thing in their mouth so easy. Definitely not a bait that I'd be using if it was super thick grass. But uh, yeah, it's working for this really, really well in the open water, cleaner water. And apparently a little fish. I guarantee there's some bigs up there though. Okay, I think we blew out the little spillway there. Let's try a little further down. This looks pretty badass right here. There's a bridge. I don't know, grass. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good reason to throw a frog. Well, actually really good grass. Sweet. Maybe this is where the big ones are. There we go. Yes. Oh, that's a giant. That is a big one. <laughs> Not a big one, but that was pretty tight. Catch them underneath the bridge on a little micro frog. I like it. I like it a lot. I wasn't sure how this guy would hold up, but he's actually, I mean, he's good to go. Let's see what our floating is like. Oh yeah. We're still buoyant Bob right here. Definitely still floating. So it's holding up a lot better than that spider did the other day by a long shot. 
Okay, spot number one, good time for sure. Hookup ratio on the Microfrog is very good. I'm trying to dig for my keys. It's freaking hot in here today. Middle of summer though, and we're still getting bit on the frog. So this next spot we're going to is gonna be like a really, really tiny creek. It's like in the middle of the city, tiny creek. I don't know if we're gonna be fishing from the bank, from the underneath bridges, from the top of bridges, what it's gonna be, but I found it the other day and it is loaded with bass. I really wanna explore it more though. I only fished one spot. This time we're gonna explore a little bit and see see if they'll eat the microfrog. Catch you there. Oh wow. It smells good down here too. Huh. Interesting stuff around these parts. Little nice part of the city. Someone's growing some things maybe. If I can do this without falling in, it'd be a damn miracle, but I'm about to make a long cast. Nope, that's not it. Oh. There we go. Oh God, yes. What do we got? It is a bass. Wow. This creek is freaking tiny. And this guy just got the old choke going on the microfrog. I mean, I hope you guys can see how small this spot really is. This is incredible that they're in this. Ow. There he goes. Little tire action. Oh yeah, we're in the city. We got tires, we got sketchy looking rebar and shit and apparently little pools that hold bass deal got him i totally saw that bass sitting right there <laughs> Ew, that's a problem oh he made it into the creek <laughs> uh i felt like a dick kind of Kinda, not too bad. I can't wait for my fish are on here. Shoot. I bet if we get up here without falling on the creek and make this cast over here, we can get one. It's like a long distance fishing. Don't get snagged. Don't get snagged, frog. Oh, there's another one. Ah. Oh. Yeah, see, the spinning rod's good for the casting distance. Not so much for the... Uh, Hoisting bass up the 25 foot bank. Whatever though, it's cool, it's fun. No, oh, yeah, it's nice. Nice walk we got here. Good thing these things are laid over because these are like freaking eight foot tall weeds. Oh, here we go. We might be able to get down a little bit here. Gonna have to go on the ass. And still time. There we go. Oh, little tiny dude. Clearly had never seen. Mr. Frog before. Let's see if he's got any friends. The bluegills don't want it. Eat it. Damn it. You know what? We're gonna see if we can catch one. I gotta go over this six foot fence, so we gotta cast over that. Oh god. <laughs> yep, she doesn't do too well in the freaking wind. So we gotta cast over this guy, but there's like a little deeper pool right there. Maybe we should just walk down there. Yeah, that makes too much sense. Let's try this. There's one. He's looking at it. Eat it. Oh, he's so little. He got it. Yes. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, shoot. You know what? These aren't big fish, but they're pretty fun to catch like this. We might actually have to go down there to this part of the creek because I think there might be a couple more fish. Shoot. I wish we could have hauled that one over. We got a hook in him, and just not enough to hoist him all the way up. We got him about halfway up. Oh, got it. Yes. Oh, that's a better one. Oh, I got to hoist him up the side. Yes. <laughs> oh, now he comes off. 
All right, we're gonna have to go put this guy back nicely, I think. Dude, chill. Not, to, not the biggest fish in the history of fishing. Almost one of the biggest fish. I mean, I don't think anyone's ever caught one over a pound and a half before, so that's up there. Little itty bitty frog, good little fish. I'm gonna throw him back, take him down there, because I think this might kill him from up there. So I ended up fishing like two other spillway or creek situation type areas, and they just, they weren't good. They were kind of shitty and it disappointed me because I want to throw this frog somewhere and actually catch some better quality bass. I didn't do it though and that kind of makes me sad, especially because I fished a couple places where there should have been some better fish. So I don't know if it, I mean, every day is different fishing. It's not like a total selling point on this frog that it only catches small fish or something just because we didn't catch any big ones on it today but um, I was just glad we got bit that was some of the craziest bites and fish catches I've ever freaking had having to haul them all the way up the bridge over the fence casting from long distances over some grass and being able to watch fish in really clear water come up and eat this I think that's the strength of this bait it's gonna work really really well and really clean water hookup ratio was actually really good on this the hook points are, are going up it's a very soft frog I would definitely do that little modification though where you take the legs out and uh, you put these little silicone or rubber feelers in there hopefully you use that method I show you guys you can use that on all your frogs that's what I do I don't I don't use very many stock frog legs I like to mix it up a little bit give them a different look that's what we do with this guy and uh, it's still got freaking it got bit today it's got teeth marks all over it but didn't sink very durable bait as far as i can tell i'm gonna use it more this is the pocket frog i'll link it down below if you guys want to use that um i would strongly advise this guy right here if you're going to spinning rod of course in my my mf or series that will be up very soon be patient be patient we're only a couple weeks away guys and then you're gonna have to go get those because they're gonna sell out really really freaking quick worked out great for today though look what i'm doing right now Got the old lead pot heating up. Oh yeah, we're not even close to ready yet. Let's crank that up. Yep, she's hot. Oh, yep, we're hot. We can't be too far off, but uh, yeah, you guys have to comment down below what you think I'm making next as far as my, uh, my dual molds go. I'm actually making a bait that I have never made before, ever, my entire life. Um, and you're also gonna have to comment down below. Let me know if you wanna see more tests with little micro type baits, like this little itty bitty frog. I had a really good time today. Always good to get back to the roots, do a little bit of creek fishing, pond fishing. It's not my favorite. I'd rather be out in this guy, to be completely honest, but it feels good to get out and catch some fish, even if they are small ones. So thanks so much for watching this one, MFers. Catch you very soon. This video is sponsored by the online mobile game War Dragon.